In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up two columns of text and link them, like this example right here, how to make a drop cap, and how to do a pull-out quote. So it's a good idea to have your grid or some version of it in the background. And then, as you can see, when you have your guides pulled out, it can help you with the layout. It'll make it easier and you'll have a more accurate placement when you're making your columns. So I know from my little thumbnail that I have of my layout idea that I wanted to have a, a larger margin on the left and the right. And so I have here about my, I pulled out my guides, make sure you have your rulers out. So under view, you get your rulers and then you can just pull out your guides and place them. I have my two guides, it's about an, an inch from the left, it's about an inch in the middle between the two columns and about an inch on the right, the right side. So by setting up my guides now, I know exactly the width of my columns and it takes a lot of the guessing work out of it. So I'm going to move over here and we're going to recreate this layout here. So the first thing I do is I take my text tool and I draw a text box and then with my black arrow tool I'm going to just hold down the option or the alt key and duplicate that text box so my text boxes are both the same size then I'm going to my word document and I don't need my headline I don't need the credit and I don't need the kicker because that's going to go on my first page I'm just working on my second page of of copy. So I command C that and come back and with my text tool you can just click and paste command V. Now depending on what your default type is when it comes up you know you might get something that obviously isn't what I want so then I'm just going to do command A and that selects all of my type even the one, even the part that I can't see, right? And then I select my regular and sans serif typefaces should be set between, what is it, eight and seven and 10, I believe. So I'm gonna take mine down to eight. And then the letting is usually four points larger. So eight plus four is about 12. And I'm gonna set my horizontal tracking to 25. And that's kind of gives me an idea of what my, my text is going to look like. Right now I have a left alignment. So you can decide on which, if you want a left alignment or justified. So remember all of the type windows, your character, your character styles, which we'll talk about later, your paragraph, all those are located under the type menu there. I can pop up my paragraph, click inside and hit command A, then I can do justify with last line aligned left, which is kind of nice. Something like that. So now I'm ready to link it to the second column. You'll see that there's a little plus sign down here, a little red square. So all I have to do is Make sure my black arrow key is selected and click on that once. And if nothing happens, then click again. And then you'll get this little icon that looks like a mini column. And just come up and there's my linked sign. I click and my type gets threaded into the second column. So now I'm ready to put my drop cap in. So the drop cap is always the first letter. Oh, and I'm going to get rid of my guides because they're kind of in the way now. I don't need them. I've got my, at least I don't need them in the near future. So I'm going to get rid of them. So just command semicolon and they'll disappear. And I select the T. I'm going to cut that out. And I'm just going to paste it. And it's probably hiding under here somewhere. There it is. bring it over here and I'm just going to select it and drag it out. I also want it to be uh, black, the kind of heaviest. And at this point, 
it's just a good idea to go up and kind of drop it on there and, and see how it looks. I kind of want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to eyeball it, something like that, maybe even a little bit bigger still. Okay. It's really hard to wrap, you know, sometimes you actually want to have a shape that you want the text wrapped around, but in this case, I want the space to be clean. I want it to be like almost like an invisible rectangle in there. So I'm going to use a rectangle to create my, my drop cap. And I'm just going to kind of estimate that the size is going to be um, a little bit bigger than my letter. And I'm going to place it up there, something like that. And then you need to double check your layers and make sure that the, the rectangle you're using to make your drop cap is located above the column of type. And I think that's my column of type. So that's set up properly. Then I hold down the shift key and I go to the object menu, text wrap, make. And I hit OK. And there is uh, the beginning of my, my drop cap. At this point, I would make sure, you know, I can select it. And then it's black right now. So I'm just going to turn it into white. And then I'm going to, uh, actually, I'm going to take my T letter and I'm going to turn it into an outline. So under the type menu, you go to create outlines. And then I can just place in there. And I have to bring it forward, bring it to the front. And there's kind of the makings of my, my drop cap. Now, it feels like it's a little... You know, there's too much space down here. That's a little weird. So I would just take my, you can edit your letter a little bit for the drop cap. So take your direct selection tool and go up. And I'm just going to uh, select both points. So select the first one and then shift. Hold down the shift key, select the other one. And I'm going to just make it a little, a little longer. I'm going to change the size a bit. And uh, I can even extend it, you know, move it out. And the, the text doesn't move because it's actually wrapped around this, this white rectangle. So it's kind of an illusion. So something like that. And I can always adjust uh, this white space around here. So, for example, with that selected, let's just go up there and select both my rectangle and the column and go back to your object and go to text strap and go to the options and it might be a little big so I'm going to turn it down to seven and my preview isn't working right now but I'm just going to go and hit OK and you can see how it kind of reduced that size and that looks a little bit better and you can kind of play with the placement you know I might I might want to bring it down a bit. Uh, so there's some room there to kind of uh, edit that. The second one is, and you make your pull quote in the same manner, right? And I have a, a version over here. So I'm just going to go grab this box and I'm going to place it. And this is also where your smart guides can come in handy. So if you are working with your smart guides on those are those little pink lines that kind of pop up and they kind of let you know how to place your object something like that okay so then I basically am using that to make my wrap again text wrap make oh and it didn't work that time so let's see what the problem is. Ah, it's probably because my, my object is down here. You see that? So I can select it and move it up here. Maybe I'll put it right below there. Okay, so now it's above my columns of type. It's above that, so now let's try. Select.
There we go. Okay. And then you can work with your type, bring it over here. And I was playing with the type placement in my box beforehand. So then I kind of have an idea that it's going to work. And I have to bring it to the front. There we go. And then I can play with fine tuning it. But that's essentially the three things how to set two columns of text, how to link them, and then use your text wrap to make a drop cap and a pull out quote.